Wow, here we are again, folks. Brother Petey with tidbits from the Word. Uh, this know also that in the last days, well, we're looking at our Second Timothy, chapter three, and Paul's speaking to a young man who is a young Christian who has been uh, taught, sent on to Paul for a while, and uh, has proved himself as a workman that needed not to be ashamed, uh, that he could uh, rightly divide the word of God, and Paul has sent him out. And now he's saying, and remember now, in the days which we live, and you know what? There was peerless times then, and there's peerless times now. And this world is full of perilous times. And Paul is telling him this, and this is what makes the Bible so true, is that it was written for yesterday, today, and for tomorrow. It is a book that is ever-present. It has never really passed. It is ever-present. And anything that was is, everything that has been is, then again, nothing is new under the sun. The, the man uh, says in the Old Testament, I forget who it was, uh, but he said there's nothing new under the sun. And uh, uh, the, everything that was, has been, is again. And uh, the days which we live in now, we are peerless times just exactly like it was in the days of Timothy. Even though that it's saying that for you and I, we're in peerless days. Uh, that speaks of dangerous and difficult times is what peerless means. The word means dangerous and difficult times. And especially for Christians. Uh, but in a sense of the word, we can't claim this. Because uh, before the rapture comes... Uh, the Christians in the United States of America might be able to claim the peerless times. And the fact is, is that back in Timothy's day, uh, they were killing the Christians. Look at Stephen. Paul had put him to martyrdom. There were Christians being martyred. And by the way, there are Christians being martyred in other places in the world right now. It hasn't happened yet so much here in America, but it will. It's headed that way. Verse 2. For men. That's who men who, those who call themselves Christians now. Shall be lovers of their own selves. Uh, they're going to be uh, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to the parents. Unthankful and unholy. If we are not living in that day right now in the United States of America, we're not, we can't see. We're blind and can't see. This is where people are in America today. They're lovers of themselves, they're boasters, they're high minded, they're proud, they're blasphemers, uh, without natural affection, they're truth breakers, they're false accusers, they're in, incontinent, they're, they're fierce. It despises of those who are good. They're traitors, they're haughty, they're high-minded, they're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. This is describing, you know, the end-time church. This is not just describing the actual everyday person out here on the street. This is describing the end time church which has been totally corrupted in Matthew uh, 13 and 33. If we'll flip over back over to Matthew and look in chapter 13 and verse 33. Let me read that to you. Uh, got, got to go back. One more page. Uh, Matthew 13 and 33. Woo wee, Peter, find it. Here it is right here. 32, 33. Another parable spoke he unto them, 
The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. What he's saying here is talking about what is going to happen about with this sin that is in this world today. She put that leaven in that dough and put it away. And here it was, one little piece. And when she come back later, it swelled up like this. And it's a whole loaf. Now, that little dough grew. And he's saying about sin. That's what sin is like. It's going to grow. Those who are lovers of pleasure, lovers of themselves, and lovers, it's going to grow into worse. And worse and worse and worse. And they're going to be traitors. And they're going to be high-minded. And they're going to be lovers of pleasure. You know something? A confession to make. Okay? The last year or so my wife was alive, we turned the television off. We didn't turn it back on. Matter of fact, we didn't even know how to turn it on. One of my sons came in about a month ago and he said, Dad, let me fix that for you. And he fixed it and showed how to turn it on. So now it's on. Can I be trusted with it? No. No, I can't. I can't be trusted with it. Why? Because I like a Western. I like to watch a Western. I know it's shooting, killing, banging, and all kinds of things in the old West and everything. But I honestly can tell you I like that. But I honestly can tell you this. If I turn on and watch one, I'm convicted, slapped to death about it, and I, I can't have any peace in my life, in my heart, in my mind, if I'm watching one. Why? Because it's not a godly thing. I know every single thing I do is not a godly thing. But on the other hand, I, if I'm on that thing for an hour and a half, I'm not on this thing for an hour and a half. The only problem is with the commercials they have today that are almost 15 minutes long, the commercial is longer than the story. So you can watch one hour, one and a half hour Western and take six hours to watch it on TV if you watch the commercials and things. So, last week I turned that on. I watched a couple of those and it took me in late into the night, almost into the morning, to watch one Western for the commercials. And dear Lord, dealing with me all the time. Is this profitable, Peter? Is what you're doing profitable? Spiritually speaking, is it profitable? No, it wasn't. And it caused me to get into a place of molly grubs and a place of forlornness and a place of thinking of the past and a, a place of thinking of myself and and uh, uh, the battle that I had sitting there for I was watching that. So, what, am, what is the battle? The battle is within each one of us. Where is the victory? The victory is in saying, no more. We said it before, as a we, when my wife was with me. Now she's in heaven, and I'm here, and i got to say me. No more. No more. Don't do it. Don't turn it on. You turn it on, the devil's going to take take you at will <coughs> and make you watch that thing. At will. So be careful. So here we go again. The instruction to 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days, palest times, verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. This refers to the uh, trappings of the 
Christianity uh, without the power. We have that today. We have church after church after church after church after church with people in them that do not have power enough to not stay home and watch a football game on Sunday when they're supposed to be in church. But they stay home and watch a football game. I just dealt with that with myself. Would I like to watch a football game? Well, I thought I would at times past. But I find, what is the interest in football for a man that doesn't follow it? My life is about Christ and about the Bible and the teaching of the Bible and about doing what the Bible says. And I can't share the time that it would take for me to learn the name of a quarterback or what a fullback is if there is such a thing in a football team or all of those things that are out there I, I can't take time to learn all of that why I've got this book in front of me that I got to learn I got something that's teaching me how to live a life of the present have you ever noticed people talk football, they talk about the past? What happened? What happened? What happened and what happened? And what happened? They can take you back to the 60s. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? And I could say to them, tell me something about the book of Timothy in the Bible. And they say, are you serious? I say, yeah, I'm serious. Tell me something about the book of Timothy in the Bible. Well, I don't know anything about the book of Timothy in the Bible. But they can tell me every football quarterback back to the 60s in certain teams. They can tell me about all the plays and everything. What, what would be more, more productive spiritually for them other than the football? would be to be able to tell me who Timothy was. Timothy was a convert of Paul the Apostle. He was a young man who was astute. He was a man of integrity. A young man of integrity who Paul was willing to send out to another part of the country and say, you go start churches over there. I'll come by and visit you every now and then. I'm writing you a letter right now and this letter that I'm, I'm telling you about that in the last days there will be those that, that uh, want to watch football rather than go to church. Uh, but in those days shall come when the stadiums shall have thousands and thousands of people in them on Sunday that would pay as much as $2,000 for a ticket. but won't put 10% in the offering plate that I require. 10 cents on a dollar in the offering plate that I require. But they'd pay $2,000 for a ticket and go to a football game on a very day when they're supposed to be in the church house worshiping God. Sitting up there with a crowd of beer drinking, cussing, swearing, raveling people. And saying they're a child of God. Those who call themselves Christian. Verse 2. Look at verse 2. Chapter 3 verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, Incarnate, fierce, despiser of those who are good. Treacherous, hardy, high-minded, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I tell you what you do. <laughs> you try talking to one of those guys at one of them football games about Jesus while the game's going on. You'll find out. 
He said, remember this now. As Paul was describing the end time church. Totally corrupt. All that I just read was in the church. All that I just read was in the church. We have it today. I used to ride my motorcycle. And there was a group of motorcycle riders that call themselves Christians and I know they're around and they, they're good, they're all right. And they're right in what they do. But that wasn't for me. I believe that we're not supposed to forsake the house of God on Sunday. Not to go on a ride as Christian people talking to people out while the church is going on. We need to stop, go to the church house. Having a form of godliness, he said here, this refers to all the trappings of a Christian. They walk into a, they drive into a church parking lot and park and they go into a church building and, and they have all of that. And he said, this is a form of godliness. But they deny the power thereof. Verse 5. What does that mean? The modern church today, practical purposes, has denied the cross and is doing this. They have denied that through the Holy Spirit works and in whom the power resides, Romans 8, 1 through through and two and verse eleven, First Corinthians one eighteen, from such turn away. He said, "Turn away from these." There is no such a thing as half measures in a whole measure. You got to have a whole measure. The command is clear about Sabbath day, about Sunday. About Sunday, our day of worship. She said, for this thought, are they which creep, listen to this, into houses, uh-oh, people sitting in the church, creeping into houses, and leading captive silly women laden with sin, led away with divers lost these divers lost a man sitting on a pew in a church house talking to a lady making a deal. I come by and visit you sometime. We'll come by, we'll we'll do a little fellowshipping together. A man that will go to a lady's house and fellowship with a lady is the devil himself. <clears throat> you hear me? I'm telling you the truth. I'm a man. Would I trust myself going to a lady's house sitting down on her couch? opening up the Bible and talking about the truth of the Bible? No way, Jose. Ain't gonna happen. The flesh will come and take over and you'll end up with an affair and an illustrious affair and you will mess up a family, yours, hers, theirs, kids, mother, father, uh, the whole nine yards, what a what a a that type of an affair does is destroys it's it's like setting a bomb off in a family and everybody getting shrapnel from it. Did you know the woman First woman, Eve, seduced her man to eat of that fruit. 
he knew better. He hadn't even he hadn't even seen what this woman looks like in the flesh. She was covered by the glory of God. They didn't need clothes because they were covered by the glory of God. He hadn't even he hadn't even yet had that fleshly desire that he had the minute he ate that fruit. He became sexually aware. She was completely different than him. And that the union they had was going to be completely different from that day on. And the devil has put that seduction into a man and a woman ever since. You've got no business, man, being in a woman's house you don't belong in. And woman, you have no business being in a man's house you don't belong in. You don't have any business getting in a car with a man that's not your man. And man, you ain't got no business being in a car with a woman that ain't your woman. I heard a preacher saying the other day, he's a preacher. His wife worked downtown. Next door neighbor worked downtown. So the next door neighbor knocks on the door and said, Hey, how about um, your wife ride with me one day and I ride with her one day. And we swap off instead of, so instead of both of us taking our cars down there every day. And the unthinking preacher says, Yeah, okay. Six months later, she's divorcing him and marrying that guy. What happened? They got together and it's just, it's just, you can't do it. You cannot do it. You can, you, if you play with fire, you will get burnt. Mark her down. I don't know who this is for. I don't know who this excerpt is for. I have no idea in the whole world who's going to be watching it and it's covering the whole world. But you need to listen to Brother Peter. ever learning and never being able to come to the knowledge of the truth. These are people in the church. Now I'm talking about people in the church. I'm talking about a preacher lost his wife. He's in the church. He's the preacher. And didn't have enough sense to know. His wife had no business getting in a car with another man riding to work. There were two people that withstood Moses. One was Janus and one was Jamboree's. And they withstood Moses. These names of these men are found in the in the, some of the older books. And he said that the people today, they so do resist the truth. They've been shown the truth. And they've rejected the truth. They're men of corrupt minds. They reprobate concerning the faith. We must see Christ crucified and Him for us that we keep our minds stayed upon Jesus that we can stay out of the world. Look, listen to this verse 9. We're in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 9. But they shall proceed no further. Means the Holy Spirit will allow no more for them to go any further in the spiritual thing. For their folly shall manifest itself as theirs also was. This is the where we are in the church today. We are in a beehive of ancestral, not ancestral, ancestral 
things happening. The flesh is the flesh. If you're in the office with a woman and you're a man, the flesh is going to rise up. And before you know it, her life and your life can be ruined. You say, well, I've been in the office with my woman, that this woman I'm in the office with, and we've kept this thing private for years. Well, you think you have, but probably every single body around you knows it. They know it. Know what's going on. Something's going on. I'm here to tell you today, the devil is deceiving people, and it's the same exact way it's always been. It just doesn't look as rude. Because you're doing it under the covers and out of sight. He said, Paul said in verse 10, You've fully known my doctrine and the manner of life and the purpose of faith, the long-suffering, the charity, and the patience, the persecutions and the afflictions uh, uh, which I have come unto, and me and Antioch and Iliconia <coughs> and Lystria, and what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all who will live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. <coughs> but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, being deceived. Boy, what we can read in between the lines. Man, but reading between the lines what we have in churches today. But you continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of. This is the message of the cross. Knowing of whom you have learned them. Timothy has learned the word now. He learned the word of God from Paul. And uh, even as all others did, in fact, uh, in this particular time, including the original 12 disciples that were out there, that the meaning of the new covenant was given to Paul, so it had to be learned from him. He was the guy grafted in at the end but it had to be learned by him because God gave him some insight that the others didn't have. And that from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures. Now, see, Timothy had known the Holy Scriptures from uh, Lois and Eunice, his grandmother and mother, which had uh, presented him with great endowment of spirituality and he said, which is able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. You have to have the entry of the word of God into your life before you can realize you are a sinner and need to be saved. So in the form of a child, you have known the Holy Spirit. He said, all the way from a child, i got to hurry. Verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, for righteousness, that a man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What he's saying here is you will properly understand the word of God and the good works when you proceed into learning the Bible and have God be the one in your life showing you what the Word of God says. Now, I, I walked down a trail here today for the last half hour of saying this. I don't care who you are, man, or who you are, woman. You do not be alone anywhere at any time. 
You know, you can sit in a group and be alone. I've had people uh, think that somebody was your wife because you sat with her and talked with her in the church house. Your wife didn't come to church with you. Her husband didn't come to church with her. You got no business sitting with her. She has no business sitting with you because the flesh will take over and it will slay you, my friend. <clears throat> I've got to go now. We'll see you next time, right? Bye-bye. This book of Timothy is a wise book. You need to read it, study it, and learn it.